So welcome everybody, I'm Aaron from Rogueworks Airsoft and I'm going to be showing you how to install our new trigger parts into your KCO2 trigger mechanism. So this is our battered old trigger mech. Uh, as you can see we've drilled a few holes in it so that we could see what was going on throughout development. Uh, this trigger mech at the moment has actually got a 150% hammer spring that's been cut down to about 40 mil long because whoever had this gun before us, uh, we haven't had it from new, uh, they lost the original hammer spring. So, but it's pretty much the same strength as the standard one. So this is a completely standard KCO2 trigger mech. So yeah, uh, we're going to launch right into this. So I'm going to put the parts to one side over here. So first thing, make sure the hammer is released and we're going to get some needle nose pliers and holding the hammer spring up, we're going to remove the guide rod. Now be careful when you take this out because it's going to want to fly off. Uh, this one, because it's had the hammer spring shortened, your hammer spring will be about that long. Um, when you try and push that down and pull it out with the pliers, it's going to try and fling off and it will try and launch this guide rod across the room. So watch your eyes and be ready to catch it. Make sure you've got a very firm grip of it with the pliers about there when you pull it down and then up out of the slot in the hammer. So put the pliers to one side. It's quite odd this camera angle because I have my phone right in front of me so I can see exactly what I'm recording and I can zoom in and out at will. I did not want to do that, anyway. Okay, next, we're going to push out the hammer pin and put this to one side with the guide rod up there. Take your standard hammer out. You'll notice that all of these parts are clear of grease because I've had this trigger mech apart so many times. It still works without grease in it and it was just a lot cleaner. I will show you which parts to lubricate when we're putting the gun back together. So I'm going to put the hammer over here. And we can now see down into the gun. I might get a torch or something actually. There we go. I've got a nice LED mag light so that we can show you certain things. So we can see down into the gun. We can see the sears, the disconnector, the trigger itself. So next we are going to push out the trigger pivot pin and pop that to one side. It's nice, it's a good idea to put the parts in order that you came, that they came out because there's several different pins and springs and things so just line them up as you take them out of the gun. That has now released both the sear inside the trigger and the trigger itself so you can try and fish it out nicely without the springs going everywhere but once you pop that pin out and the hammer's already out you can pretty much just turn it upside down and wiggle it till everything falls out and you probably didn't even see that but that spring tried to escape just there so we now have the trigger and our trigger mechanism now has no trigger and you can see the trigger reset plunger has tried to escape from its little hole in the back of the trigger guard here. That has a spring behind it but it's very rare for the spring to try and escape and there is actually a little hex screw on the back here. Come on focus. There we go, you can see the little hex screw in the back. That is, you can remove that, that hex screw and it lets you get the spring out for the trigger reset plunger and there is a small amount of adjustment um, when, when you wind in that hex screw in and out to determine how hard the reset is on the trigger, but it doesn't really offer you much adjustment. If you do it too tight, the, it, the trigger won't reset, because it, or the, tr the gun won't fire because the trigger plunger can't go all the way back in. But anyway, we're gonna put that up here. Um, so the trigger mech is now pretty much clear. So we're gonna put that to one side for a minute because we're gonna, gonna be working on that blast. So we've got the trigger itself here now. So you can see this little piece that pivots in here, that's your disconnector. And 
this is your trigger sear itself when that is in the gun this little spring will go like that that would be in there and those two engage like that inside the trigger and when it's in the gun and you have your trigger pin going all the way through these would look like that and normally you'd pull the trigger and that sear would drop down releasing the hammer and then when the hammer goes down it'll push the disconnector which lets the sear separate from the trigger so it can go up and catch the hammer again while the trigger is still pulled but we'll come to that in a, in a few minutes so they're supposed to look like that when they're in the gun and but unfortunately that pin has to go in last so I'm just going to disassemble this for now because the first thing we're going to do is reassemble our new trigger parts so when you pop that out we have the old trigger here which we can put up the top you have your disconnector itself and the pivot trigger pivot pin that we removed earlier and the tiny disconnector pin it's the shortest of the three that goes at the back of the trigger Disconnector, trigger sear, and disconnector spring. So, so we're not going to need the old trigger, so we'll put that to one side. We're not going to need the old hammer, so we'll get that out of there. We're not going to need the old sear, so we'll get that out of there. Now we can bring in the fang trigger. This is compatible with standard trigger parts you'll notice the top sections are identical the difference is the visible portion and this adjuster screw in the back which will come uh, to you set around four millimeters this is this spring this screw is for adjusting the over travel of the trigger once you've pulled the trigger it stops you uh, having unnecessary movement of the trigger so I checked a few minutes ago this one's set to about 4.15 millimeters so uh, should have hopefully enough travel on it for the gun to actually fire if we wind it out too much the gun won't fire because you can't pull the trigger enough to actually release the, the hammer and sear so we're going to get that bit and the new judgment sear and we're going to need the disconnector disconnector spring disconnector pin and trigger pin in a few minutes and we're going to reassemble the trigger. So we've got here a trusty Abbey gun grease. And we're going to get some of this on our finger. You can use a cotton bud for this, I suppose. So just be careful you don't get any threads. And because I don't want to get grease on my nice gun mat, we've got a bit of kitchen towel here just to put stuff on as we go I'm going to grease just lightly I've probably got too much on my finger there wipe a bit off don't need huge amounts I'm just going to grease lightly the sides the disconnector I'm going to Get some on the hook of the disconnector itself, and I'm going to grease the sides of the trigger. You do not need huge amounts of this, it's not going to be absolutely swimming in it. because the trigger doesn't move very much okay and we're going to grease the pins as well everywhere I hate this stuff well, I, I love it but it gets everywhere 
and I'm going to slot that in there. Oops. Line it up at the back. Put the small disconnector pin in there. Now, if your pins don't fit into the trigger holes, it's best it, obviously do a dry build first. You can use some fine grit sandpaper or wet and dry paper, this is 800, to get your pins. You can see this one's quite shiny because I've already had to do this. And you can spin them in the sandpaper just to smooth them down because most KCO2s, the pins will have some amount of wear on them. Which can make it difficult for them to fit into the trigger because these holes on the trigger are specced at exactly three mil, so they're a pretty tight fit. Uh, a KCO2 that's brand new, that's got nowhere on its pins, they should slide right in, but it's still a good idea to grease them. And if you're really struggling, the holes in the trigger, you can use a small round needle file to actually file out the holes a little bit like that. Just to loosen them up a little bit, but best approach is always to sand down the pins so that they can slide in. So anyway, we don't need that one yet. We've got to finish putting the rest of the trigger together. coat in on the new sear and then we get the disconnector spring that goes in this hole on the back of the sear and we just line the whole lot up in here so we put the hook on the disconnector Tuck the spring under like that. And be very careful because that, that little spring will try and escape. Okay, so now we've got trigger. I'm just gonna make, I wiped a little bit of the grease off there, so I'm just gonna make sure the outside got a nice film of grease on it. Now tricky part is getting this back into the gun because you've got to get the sear down to where the safety is without it losing that spring and without a pin through it and there's another pin that it's got to go underneath as it goes in so and you've also got to have your trigger reset plunger back in the back of the trigger guard so let's move some stuff out of the way. I've done this hundreds of times now, but it's uh, hard to do on camera, I'm sure. I'll no doubt screw it up a few times, so don't be surprised if this video cuts in and out quite a lot. So try and keep your trigger mech horizontal because it stops too many things trying to fall up and down. So I've got the plunger in the back there. I've just got my finger on it for now. Now we're going to get the trigger. You don't escape. Ooh. Try and install it with the sear hooked on the disconnector so that when you push it, it pivots like that. That tells you it's kind of in the set position. That's where we want it. There's a lot less chance of the sear itself escaping while it's in the set position. So making sure that that plunger doesn't escape, because if that plunger escapes out the back of the trigger mech, you'll have to take this the trigger back out and do it again. So you want your trigger kind of like that orientation, upwards, and then just kind of pivot it in, keeping the sear itself pointing upwards. Now when you get to like that, 
So the bottom of the sear is sat on that cross pin, this one. You want to get a flathead screwdriver and right where right where the sear itself is you can hook a screwdriver in there and just use it use it to push the sear down under the pin under this cross pin now you can actually see this if I get a torch you can see the sear in there I've just used that screwdriver just to tuck the arm of it underneath that pin yeah so So the trigger is mostly sat where it's supposed to be now. The sear is kind of in place, but it's not pinned in yet. So we're going to try and get the pin in next. So I've already greased this pin quite a lot, but it still might put up a bit of a fight when I try and uh, put it back in the gun. I'm get a bit more grease. I apologize if this video is a lot of my hands on the camera. I'm kind of hugging my phone here. It's right in front of my face. I've got another microphone off screen so that you can't hear every single breath I take. Anyway. You can see that the trigger is kind of sat where we want it to be. It's a good idea to grease this trigger plunger, but I'm not gonna, I can't do that now, I forgot. So you can see when I pull the trigger, if I get a torch, if I apply a light bit of pressure to the trigger, you can see the holes where everything's kind of lining up. So the, the sear is just sat in the gun loose at the minute, being held in place by the disconnector at the back. The trigger is kind of sat where it's supposed to be. The trigger plunger is held in at the back, but you can see if you get just the right amount of pressure on the trigger, the holes start to line up, which is what we want. So I'm gonna get this pin, apply pressure with my thumb, and just kind of wiggle the trigger until it goes in to the first stage, which I think it has done. And then keeping my finger on that side, I'm gonna flip it over and what we need to do now, let me grab my torch again. You can see the hole in there for the sear isn't lined up and no amount of wiggling the trigger is gonna get that to line up. So we have gotta push that back into position. Oops. Now you can do this with a screwdriver through here and just look in the hole. There we go look in the hole and wiggle the sear around at the same time as applying pressure with your finger on the other side and then you'll feel it go through and then just keep pushing it through it's just there's a lot of wiggling involved but there's definitely a knack to it so that pins all the way in now so and that's gone through the trigger itself and the sear which is sat down in the gun down in there And you can, if I look through this inspection hole, you can see the tip of the sear moving around in there. Mm -hmm. So that is the trigger itself installed. Should have a bit of movement on it. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to show you how to install the hammer and your guide rod and hammer spring your hammer pin and the new part that we're including the hammer damper so your one of these will be red this is black it's a section of silicon tubing that is just the right size thickness and length to provide a nice soft stop point for the hammer during the reset you'll you'll it's very technical but uh, you, it makes sense if I showed you an exploded diagram with the slow motion, nice 3D graphics of how the hammer resets and what it does, you know, how far it moves, you'd understand why having a heavier hammer needs a rubber end point for it to stop on instead of it just slamming down. Because what we were finding was the hammer spring guide rod was escaping from the hammers because it was being pushed down too far during reset so you'll see where there's the bump stop comes in in a minute so the first thing we're going to do i'm going to show you the safest way not necessarily fastest but i'm going to show you the safest way to get your 
guide rod and hammer spring back into place because this is a really fiddly part um, it will fight you every step of the way now the key detail we're looking for is this hole in the back so we've got the trigger in a place it's all every you know it's all in there it's um, what we're gonna do we're gonna restrain the hammer spring and guide rod in position before we put the hammer in because that's how it has to be so that we can get the hammer damper over it so what I've got is some wire this is 0.5 mil enameled copper wire you could do the same with thread but I find it's easiest with um, a bit of wire so let me just lay this down and I'm just gonna get oh my god my phone just cut out what the hell Please don't tell me I wasn't recording that entire time. So I've got this wire here, uh, 0.5 mil, um, copper wire, enameled, and I'm just gonna cut myself, uh, I shouldn't pause during that sentence just there. I'm just gonna cut, say, four inches or so off. Don't need a huge amount. And we're gonna get, oops, where's it gone? They're trying to escape. Squeaky chair again. I'm gonna get our hammer spring and guide rod and we're gonna thread wire through it and then pull it down to make a tail. Maybe twist it together a little bit so it's easier to thread through. And we're gonna to wanna to get it down through the trigger mech. <clears throat> and out this hole at the back there that you can see. I'm just going to thread that down there. Probably should have used slightly more wire so it was easier. Right. Oh well. Pull it down there. And twist the ends up a little bit more. And we're just going to want to use, I've got an Allen key. We could use a screwdriver, but I find Allen key is easiest just because it's not too long. We're going to want to make ourselves a little pull handle. Spread that apart. Get our Allen key through the back here. Twist it up. Basically, you're making yourself pull handle so that you can compress your hammer spring from the outside of the trigger mech and it makes your life so much easier. I'm just going to make sure I've got enough twists on this wire so it can't undo itself at the wrong moment. There we go. So take up as much slack as you can and then slot your allen key through and make it so it's like a pull handle so you can pull it to get the guide rod out of the way that's going to be essential when uh, when we're reinstalling the hammer in a few minutes so it's a good idea before you put this back in just to put a light coating of the gun grease on the guide rod itself and some on the tip as well but i've just been touching that with my finger so i've already wiped that off but now that you've got your guide rod in there and it's held in place by the wire and pull handle, you can get your hammer damper. Yours will be red, I believe. Um, and we're just going to slot this over the guide rod, push it to the back of the trigger mech using the needle nose pliers. Uh, my dog is yapping in his sleep. anyway so we want the hammer damper pushed to the back of the trigger mech there and it'll, it'll sit nicely out the way it won't interfere with the trigger it won't interfere with your hammer because the hole through the middle is big enough um, but it will give your the actual it won't interfere with the hammer spring and guide rod because it's a very loose fit and it's a 14 mil outer diameter piece of tubing and the gap between the inside of your trigger mech is about 13 13 and a half mil 
so it'll sit nicely and snug at the back there and shouldn't move around. So try and make sure that this area at the back of your trigger mech is clean of grease before you slide that in there. It'll help to make sure that that, that piece of silicon doesn't work its way out of there or slide around because we want it to stay in that position now that it's over the hammer spring with the hammer spring going through the middle of it. So next we're going to get the hammer itself and we're going to want to grease it up. A little bit of grease. Just the lower section really needs it because that's the bit where all the pivoting happens. The top is just kind of for weight and impact. And I'm going to put it on a bit of kitchen towel down here. Paper towel to you guys, I guess. I don't know. Depends where you live. Get some on the hook of the sear itself. And just on the sides, it's not going to be, again, it's not going to be absolutely swimming. As long as it's got a good amount of grease on it, so it can move around. Put some on the top face as well, because about here is where it impacts your striker inside the gun. Anyway, um, before I put that back in, I'm going to put a bit of grease on the end, the ball joint end of the guide rod as well, because that has to pivot freely in the slot in the hammer. So now we get the hammer. Just make sure my fingers clean because I want grease everywhere again. And this is where a little pull handle comes in. So you get this with one hand, pull the guide rod back, on the other hand. Keep your hammer in that slot and you want the guide rod to go should click into place when you release the tension your guide rod should click into that slot in your hammer and it should sit in the nice little ball joint socket there so your hammer is still loose and you could still lift it out if you wanted but um, your guide rod should be kind of pinning it in place now that you've let go of that pull handle at the back and then we're going to get a hammer pin going to lube it up somewhat just going to run it around inside of my grease tub lid here and we're going to do the same as we did with the trigger we're just going to kind of eyeball that hole this one so we can see straight through it where the hammer goes. I'm going to wiggle it around a bit, wiggle the hammer. It should just go nicely through like that. Okay. So that is hammer and the trigger in. And what you can do now is just pull your uh, your little T handle thing out. Get something to cut the wire. And that should release all the tension. And you can just pull that out of there. And that has released the guide rod. And that's it. We should now have a working trigger mechanism, which we do. And it's a much nicer, much lighter trigger than it was before. This particular example feels a little bit rough because I didn't put quite as much grease onto some of the parts as I, as I probably should have. Probably should have put some more on the pins because this, this trigger mech's really old and worn. But if you've been regularly maintaining your trigger mechanism, then there's probably already plenty of grease in there. This one, I've had this fully stripped down. It's been washed repeatedly and put back together again. But anyway, so light pull on the trigger, just a couple of millimeters of movement on there now. Now you won't be able to see this because you've not got inspection holes, but if, if we look in here, oh, can I zoom in? Uh, I think there's too much grease in there to see at the minute. But still a little bit of movement. You can just see the hammer move slightly just before it fires. 
and that is literally all the slack on these worn trigger pivot holes taking up particularly on the hammer itself that is your striker lock so when the bolt comes back it pushes the hammer down and at the same time releases the striker lock and that you saw that move backwards then and you'll be able to feel now with the hammer in the set position that it, instead of it being able to go quite far down and then hit the guide rod itself it now squishes onto the hammer damper that's underneath the tip there which is a much much better fit for the gun uh, much better prevent wear and shock you know helps with shock absorption and stuff like that and prevents your guide rod getting ejected if your hammer slams down onto it too hard which was something we were finding in testing so it's just a, a nice stress relief part to have in there and every time the hammer hits it it squishes it back down against the back of the trigger mechanism which is why we're not worried about it jamming up anything or interfering with anything so function functionally testing the trigger it should go down you should hear the you should hear the click while well, you're not touching the trigger you should hear the click of the sear uh, catching the hammer so then when you pull the trigger let's test the safety as well so um, I think with this sear if the safety is pressed it won't actually let you cock the gun yeah because the safety prevents the tr the trigger sear from going down and if the hammer if the sear can't go down then you can't actually rack the gun so um with the safety off cock it apply the safety and now that trigger sear won't move so i can't actually fire that gun now and then you release it and so the safety works push it down we hear the click of this trigger recatching now a key one because this gun, the bolt will come back before you've released the trigger normally. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna fire it and keep the trigger, the trigger held because that will test whether the disconnector is working properly. Pull the trigger, keeping the trigger held, push the hammer down. First click is the Siri catching. And that second click when I release the trigger is the disconnector resetting. And it's very faint, so I'll do it one more time. Fire the gun. Trigger is still held. Hammer resets even though the trigger is still held. Release the trigger and you hear a very faint second click which is the disconnector resetting. If you're not hearing either of those clicks then we need to do some troubleshooting and this one up here, the, uh, the striker lock, that's kind of, well it is connected to the trigger but it's inconsequential to the operation of the trigger mechanism itself. So, so one more time, fire the gun, keeping the trigger held. Sear clicks, trigger clicks. Now, depending on how many problems we get with people doing the installation, uh, we'll probably do a separate video if necessary on troubleshooting for the installation of these. Uh, do, we, we won't know until uh, the design's been out there for a while, because this is the first batch. We won't know whether we need to do a troubleshooting, troubleshooting video or not yet. And that's it, that's how you install the Rogueworks Fang Trigger and Judgment Hammer and Sear Set. Thanks a lot, goodbye. And for this you're going to need needle files like these. You can buy a whole set of these like this, all different shapes. Probably for less than ten pounds. I just I just went on Amazon a few minutes ago. You could get a set of six of these uh, for like five pounds, or like less than ten bucks if if it's American. So basic troubleshooting. There are three points of adjustment on this gun. First and easiest is if you assemble the gun and uh, it won't fire at all. Like you pull the trigger and you can't feel any clicks or anything. The hammer just the hammer just won't fire. First point is to disassemble the gun again and wind this screw in, uh, I don't know, maybe half a turn, just so to make sure that you have enough trigger movement to uh, 
release the sear on the hammer so that it'll actually fire. So wind that screw in, that's the easiest, put that all back in. Uh, if you then uh, cock the hammer down, pull the trigger, and you've got plenty of movement, but the gun still doesn't fire, and you know that you assembled the trigger in the gun with it in the set position like that, and you're pulling the trigger and nothing's happening, then you, you probably need to remove a bit of material from the top of your disconnector arm here. You can see I just filed this one down a few minutes ago. Uh, this often happens because uh, the original hammer hits the disconnector arm just here and it bends it slightly upwards, meaning that when the hammer's in the set position, it never fully releases the uh, disconnector. So that's that's the first one to try. You can remove a bit of material from there. You don't need to go completely flat with it, just get a square file, uh, a flat needle file, and just remove a bit of material off of there so it's not quite so round. You can see this one has a bit of a flat spot on top. Just remove a bit of that. So you put the uh, gun back together. And third point of adjustment is if you put the gun together, it's with the trigger in the set position so that hooked on there like that when you've got it in the gun and you cock the hammer down pull the trigger it fires once but then won't fire again so if you if you can cock the hammer down pull the trigger and nothing happens then that means that your disconnector is not successfully resetting so you put the gun together with it in the set position you pull the trigger once and then it's released it to reset the trigger and it's just now not quite catching enough so the third point of adjustment is to get a square file and try and keep it a 90 degree but you want to put your square file in that hook on the disconnector and just take off maybe like a few thousandths of an inch like 0.1 millimeters 0.2 millimeters and your aim is to bring bring this hook further this way so we're not we're not trying to sand down into this part of the disconnector we're trying to bring this hook further that way and you don't need to take much off of it most of the ones that I've had to do they've only needed 0.1 or 0.2 millimeters filing off them and that's using a square diamond file because you need this to stay at a 90 degree hook that needs to stay a sharp 90 degree corner to make sure that it catches your sear nicely and can't slide off but you just need to bring that down a little bit it's, it's definitely easier and safer to file the disconnector itself because that's made of a soft cheap pot metal whereas this is made out of hardened steel and it's kind of a irreversible thing, but uh, if you file off too much, then you'll just add more play into your trigger, but it will make the gun work. But that's all to do with how much slack there is or wear in the trigger pin holes for your gun. So three points of adjustment. Easiest is your trigger over travel screw. If you're pulling the trigger and nothing's happening, just give your trigger more movement, just to be sure that that's not the problem. If you're setting the hammer and pulling the trigger and nothing happens, you're not hearing any clicks at all, uh, regardless of you know how many, how many times you pull the trigger, then you could try removing some material off the top here. If your disconnector has a dent just here, they can get a little bit bent. And third point of adjustment, if your gun, if your trigger mech only fires once and then you're not hearing the second click for the trigger resetting, then your disconnect is probably not re-engaging on the trigger here. So you need to use a square file and just take a little bit off the bottom of that hook. They're the only three points of adjustment. If uh, your trigger mech's not working, it's going to be one of those three causing the problem.